Hello and Happy New Year. Thanks for kind of joining the channel again in January 2020. So as usual, it's time for my monthly update on my solar PV system here in the UK. So the usual reminder as to what my setup is. So I have a nine kilowatt solar PV array on my roof with a six kilowatt inverter. That is connected to a few things. One is a Tesla Powerwall 2, uh, the non-backup gateway edition, along with uh, a couple of my energy devices. One being the Eddy, where I can divert uh, excess solar to hot water and a generation one Zappi that I can use to charge my Tesla Model S. So let's jump on the laptop and check out the statistics for December 2019. Okay, so I don't think December's statistics to be too much of a shocker. So as usual happens in December, weather isn't great, uh, but it's. I think it was kind of similar to last year, it was November really, it was the super crappy month. Uh, and the other thing obviously with December is uh, people are off because of Christmas and New Year. There's more cooking because you're entertaining and all that kind of stuff. And the other change for me is obviously this year I have my Tesla Model S, so we'll definitely be consuming um, more electricity to charge it up overnight uh, on the Optimus Go tariff. So I'm obviously keeping the cost down, same as still charging up the power wall overnight as well. So just five pence uh, per kilowatt there. And, um, I still have the panel heater on here in the cave uh, for about half of the day to kind of keep things nice and warm and cozy for me in here whilst I'm working. So let's uh, look at how well the system performed. So it produced a stunning 191 kilowatt hours of electricity from solar, which is pretty rubbish. Um, but we'll see when we scroll down in a minute, that's very close to kind of what we had uh, in term of last December's performance. So I was able to self consume 97% of that. So 185.24 kilowatt hours and it somehow exported 5.75 kilowatt hours. So my consumption, it was pretty big. So 1.45 megawatt hours. Um, so again, I had to import most of that at 1.27 megawatt hours. So if we look uh, just really quickly at the graph, we can see um, overall, lots of consumption are on most days. Actually, Christmas wasn't uh, too bad, I guess, because I stopped work for a few days. Um, so the heating wasn't on over here in the cave. But really, really small solar production days. I think like the 10th, the 12th, even the 20th, there's nothing on the 20th whatsoever. So it be interesting when we go through um, the day by day quickly. But if we look at kind of historical um, statistics. We know that from last uh, last month, November was pretty bad compared to 2019. But if we look, um, 2018 and 2019 for December are pretty much on par. So no, no kind of mega surprises there. Okay, so let's uh, go into the day by day, see if there's anything anomalous going on in there. So as we're gonna see every single day, um, as I mentioned, every month, I have a few things happening at the early hours of the morning. So from half past midnight to half past four is when the Octopus Go tariff is the cheapest for me. So that's when I'm doing a couple of things. I start off by um, charging the Tesla Powerwall 2 up from the grid. I also uh, spend a couple of hours heating hot water uh, using the Eddy pulling from the grid. And also if my Tesla Model S is plugged in, that will charge as well. So this graph that we see here is a typical uh, combination of around 3.5 to 4 kilowatts is what's charging the power wall. Then we see another surge of another 3 kilowatts, which is when hot water is being heated. So we can see, you'll see this pretty much every day or spikes higher than that if the car is plugged in and charging as well. So nothing kind of super odd uh, on the first. Same thing happens uh, on the second pretty much. Obviously cars charging as well there, which is why we see uh, a lot more consumption. And again, we're gonna see lots and lots and lots. I'm not, I'm not gonna stop on it every single day, um, but obviously where we're, the battery's running out, especially during a weekday, 
because I'm over here in the cave, so the heating on at the weekend, there's no heating on in here, so things aren't as bad. So third, pretty typical. Fourth, pretty typical. A little bit of spike of solar there, which wasn't too too bad in the in the kind of late morning. Fourth, same as usual. Fifth and sixth. Uh, see lots of uh, car charging going on. I did quite a few trips uh, over December. A little bit of uh, excess there, which is interesting. But it mainly will be on the weekends where I had um, any excess that could go back to the grid. Tenth. Same kind of thing. I'm not sure how uh, interesting these updates are in the winter when it's, <laughs> it's, it's not really a solar PV up to date update at all, other than look, hardly anything was generated. So here we are. Was it the 11th that was the zero generation? There was, there was some on the 11th. 12th. Barely anything there, but 1.26 kilowatt hours of solar generation. 3.73 there, 8.45. Generation is just laughable, isn't it, during the uh, the winter months? Okay, a lot there. A little little smidge of surplus on the 17th. Not too much again to talk about on. Uh, the 18th, but definitely noticing in the winter having an electric vehicle that is the everyday car, large amounts of consumption. But the main thing is when that consumption is happening. So you can see majority of this is all happening when I'm only paying five pence a kilowatt. So, you know, it's perfect really. Oh, that was it. This was a terrible day, wasn't it? 20th, yeah, 280 watt hours. Ridiculous. Twenty first, twenty second, a lot. Twenty third, and I remember now the twenty fifth was a good solar day. Yeah, good for good for December. So fifteen point eight one kilowatt hours. So I didn't use anything from the grid outside of obviously the charging in the morning. Because so I remember on Christmas Day I was cooking the dinner, and you know ovens were on, hobs were on, but there was plenty of solar, which was just covering everything. It was fantastic. 26, so it's now again, pretty much no production. Same for the 27th. A little bit better on the 28th. 29th, not so good. And that's it. Not a, not a good day at all uh, on the 31st either, but yeah. So we can see on the graph here, January's gonna be pretty much similar, but then we're gonna get a, a big jump back up in February. So roll on February um, and things should be a lot better. So let's just get my phone out and uh, I can see what we got from Powell, etc. Because I remembered this time um, to take my pictures. So uh, in terms of the car charging, I pretty much had nothing uh, from solar to charge a car this month. 0.09 kilowatt hours, so nothing, uh, but I put a total of 396.57 kilowatt hours of energy into the battery again, all at five pence a kilowatt. So this is where the Octopus tariff really comes into its own. Uh, water, very similar situation, only 4.70 kilowatt hours of surplus went into heating um, hot water and then for my power wall I managed to get out 426 kilowatt hours of energy uh, from the power wall um, obviously that they meant it was cheaper rate electricity I was using during the day so that's it for December um, one thing that someone had mentioned in a previous uh, video in the comments that I haven't had time to look at yet but if you do know the answer to this please 
um, leave a comment below is people have mentioned that I might be able to have better energy efficiency here in the cave if I moved away uh, from these electric kind of I don't know if it's convection heater or what you properly call it but to an infrared panel heater now without doing any research whatsoever the only thing I, I can imagine that may be more energy efficient when it's running um, but I'm not sure how well it will do in terms of heat retention or whatever so I don't know if that is a viable option I've mentioned before that I've considered buying a storage heater but the amount of money so to get one for about this size of this room I think it was about 800 pounds or something um and just the, the amount of money that I spend um on powering that over the winter months it would just take me many 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 years um, to recoup the cost, so I don't know if it makes sense. Whereas if a panel heater, an infrared panel heater, um, made more sense, that may be something I would consider. So if you know a bit about that, please let me know. Um, also let me know, how did your system perform in December? Was it better than November? Or um, was it equally disappointing? And are you looking forward to sunnier days in the not too distant future? Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.